folks, Adam Dubay here, and today we're we'll looking at the Ponable.kr level BF is what I'm going to call it. So this is the first of the rookies um, section here in Ponables.kr, and so I'm excited to get started on these what should be uh, more difficult levels. So here this BF challenge is uh, 150 points, which I believe all of the past challenges the most points were 10 points. So you know we'll see how how this goes difficulty wise. Um, it said I made a simple BF language emulation program written in C. The bracket commands are not implemented yet. However, the rest of the functionality seems to be working just fine. Find a bug and exploit it to get us code. So uh, get a shell. So we can download um, the bin BF and the BF underscore libc.so. We can see that it's running at punable.kr on port 9001. So for those that don't know, Language BF has been used in a lot of CTS. It's in this family of esoteric and weird programming languages. Uh, and so it is basically an extremely minimal programming language. Um, so let's go down to a, we may have to figure out and um, actually uh, use this. We, I'm thinking off the bat that this may be a write a BF program that actually triggers the vulnerability. So it will maybe need to set things up correctly. So this may be good. We can see this hello world program here. So all of the character, I mean, all the commands you have are um, these characters. And so your program is completely out of those characters. So um, you can see that it looks kind of ridiculous like this. Um, so this is the hello world BF program. Um, and so this, you know, it's a, uh, this will be a fun challenge, I think. Um, and so we should dive in. The other things we can get right off the bat just by looking at this. So it's, A, we know it's running on some port, which means we're going to have to do a remote exploitation, which is great. Um, the other thing we notice is that it gives, it gives us the specific version of libc that they're using. And this uh, leads me to think that we, obviously, they're not going to give us something if we don't uh, maybe need it. And so what this is going to do is going to allow us to uh, really try to understand uh, if we need to know what's the difference between offsets in versions of libc or something, that's what we'll have there. Um, so the first thing, as you know, I like to do, run file on bf, so we know it's a 32-bit executable, which is good. Dynamically linked, we know we actually have the exact version. Uh, we also know it's not stripped, which is nice because we'll have some symbols for us. Uh, and we can do the same thing on libc.so, and just to, for Proof that there's no spoilers, this exploit file is completely empty. So, uh, same thing with the libc. The other thing I always like to do is to run strings on the binary, especially if it's something like this, like I have no idea what it's doing, and just really scroll through it. So, see, um, so we can see that here's a string in here. And so, it's important to understand what strings does is it just goes through looking for sequences of ASCII characters that are a certain length or longer. Uh, followed by, I believe, a null terminating string. So we can see a lot of this stuff standard in as get string lang, then set get car standard out, set debuff. This is all going to be uh, in the global offset table of the program. Uh, so we can see the string of this is not supported, uh, which is actually exactly what it said. Uh, welcome to BF testing system, type some BF instructions except for those brackets. Um, and then we have other stuff, symbols, all that kind of. So now we can just execute it. You know, I like to get a feel for the program. Um, ch, always got a ch mod plus x, bf, gotta make it executable. Uh, plus, all right, that did something. Let's see if we can get it to do a hello world, like uh, the example here, which will probably not work because we can't use arrays, but hey, we should be able to still see what's going on. did output some stuff, but our brackets uh, syntax was clearly not working. So, uh, and the other thing I like to do is run it under S trace and L trace. So S trace is going to put all the system calls that it's making here, so we can just see that it's. And you know, you have to look at these things a lot of time, a lot of times to really understand it. But really, it's uh, you know, it's writing some output. It's calling fstat. Uh, it's 
reading onto the heap, which is probably one of these break calls. It's calling read. Um, it is reading it. It's writing out that these things aren't supported. It's also writing out these characters that we just saw with the output. And then it's closing. So we can do L trace. Do the same thing. So L trace is going to be hooking instead of the system calls. So the system calls are all in between the program in user space and the kernel in uh, the operating system. So uh, if you're confused as to the difference of those, I highly recommend you check out my CSE 545 uh, videos specifically on application and security because we cover this a lot. So, but here what we're looking at is all of the, uh, these are now all of the, if I scroll them, um, these are all the libraries, so the libc functions that are getting called. So actually a lot there's uh, so it's using str length it's using puts so these are things we should be able to see in the disassembly so uh, so let's pop over so that's you know, all that I mean I guess we could try what happens if we run VF and just pass an obnoxiously large um, input to it so so what happens if we say do Yeah, so it's, we can see it's not crashing right on all of this input, so that's good. So this means that it's not just a buffer overflow on the string that you pass in, right, which would be probably a little bit too easy. So uh, let's see. Let's start. So we got this open now in Hopper. Um, so we're going to look for the thing. Now, just to kind of see what's going on. So it's calling set debuff on standard out and standard in, but basically what these are doing, you could ignore these for now. Oh, the other thing we didn't see is what happens when we uh, what happens when we just netcat to this guy. So we should see exactly the same thing here. And this may be surprising because uh, what we're used to is that this um, is a so for netcatting to a program, it means that we're connecting to it over a socket. But as we can see here, this is a we're running this program locally from standard out. So the key is um, the wonders of X inet uh, D. So um, I won't go into it, but basically you can use this to set up a console program that's accessible over the internet. The problem is you get into issues of buffering. Um, so you may not get all the output you want. So this is what this set debuff is. So essentially the idea is Literally, we can ignore it. Um, okay, let's see if we just need to start with E with this thing. Welcome to the yeah, testing system. Then set variable 8, 0, 100. Then set fills the first n bytes of memory area for two by s constant byte c. So basically, so this variable 408 is going to be on the stack, so it's 400 hex. And so this is why we couldn't overflow the buffer. So we know we can only give 1024. So the most we can give is 1024. So that's what this F gets. It's going to make sure that only 1024 bytes are going to go in there. And then it's going to have this loop counter of var 40c from 0 less than the string length. That's when F gets uh, the question I'm wondering is what happens when F gets uh, more? So F it gets reads in at most one less than size characters. Okay, it stops reading, new line, determining null by its sort of less characters buffer. Cool, so no overwrites. This is a very basic for loop. Um, it's going to pass in bar for C. So it's going to dereference bar only. Yeah, this is passing in and in with zero and MF. Yeah, so what this is going to do, oh, we can see. So the other thing we didn't do is run this in uh, 
check sec on our binary just to see what screen corrections it has. So it is uh, not position dependent, it has a non executable stack, and it has a stack command. Okay, so, so this do bf function looks like this is going to be our main, and it looks like it's going to be passing in our input to this function one after the other. So that's what this so far, 40C is our iterator variable, it's like a variable i, and then 408, so it's just going into the index there and passing that in. So this is straight forward. our memory area. So what we know what this contact look like. No, such a day. Okay, so we can see it's got a PSS segment, which is pretty large. Okay, so this tape looks like it's uh, some memory. So, and, okay, I guess the thing I didn't explain about VF is VF, even though it has these incredibly uh, simple commands of incrementing a data pointer, decrementing it, incrementing a byte, decrementing a byte, outputting a byte, um, except one byte of input, storing its byte, it's a byte, and, and then the, the brackets look like jump commands. Essentially, the idea is that this is a Turing complete programming language. So the idea would be with the, the tape, uh, they're probably in, implementing that in terms of a tape command uh, to be close to a turn machine. So well, okay. So it sets it puts tape at where P is located. So here. So we'll have to figure out how that exactly is working. It's actually pretty standard. Um, it's actually not that complicated. Okay. So, uh, look at it here. Error would be compiling. Awesome. So, we won't do that for that. But we can go through here. So, essentially, what this is going to be is um, this is essentially what they've done is implemented a very basic interpreter. So, something that's going to. So, the way you have basically an interpreter and the way you write it is you go you know, input by input, you first tokenize it. Here, that's very easy token is simply just one character. So then you're just going to have this huge big block that says uh, basically a switch statement um, with all the different cases of what character it is, what happens here. So, and this is very standard if you look at any kind of emulation or interpreters, so that's what you're going to get. So, um, okay. So, GDP. Stack pointer on the base pointer, push EX. So, R1, this is a BF, called BF instruction. That So subtract, so then create space on the stack for point four variables. Move that variable to EAX. Move the AL as the lower byte of the EAX register onto FRC. So this then is local BF instruction. Move SX.
move with sine extension. Okay, great. So move with sine extension to PAX, subtract 2B from PAX, which this is a greater than plus. So then it's going to compare PAX with 30. So if we look at our handy ASCII table, plus, we can see that plus is at 2B. So we can go here to our VF cheat sheet and in Wikipedia we can see that so the characters that are important here are going to be left, right, uh, angle bracket, plus, minus, dot, comma, and then while loop. So we don't have a while loop. So let's go back here. So it's subtracting that. Less than 30 is going to be on my greater than 30. It's just going to, it looks like we can see it. It looks like we can get a lot. Again, at 24, the stack pointer, copy the X, copy the D. Okay. So then we compare. So basically, the idea is to figure out then what this So this is move into the switch table at EAX times 4 and jump to EAX. So this is. Yeah, so this is how the switch table is implemented of all of these different cases. So the idea is, and what's nice is that, uh, so this is actually an indirect jump, as you can see. It's loading the value to jump to from uh, memory from the switch table. Uh, but Hopper very nicely has decoded all that for us, which is great. So the Hopper then says, So it's saying that, oh, it's putting this not supported. So this must be Actually, I mean, it should be pretty easy because we can say, okay, this is very simple. This is with brackets. The case here of 19 is move D reference B. This must be the equivalent of this, this makes sense, so 17 or 19. And here, another case, it would be put character. So we take P, we reference it with an EAX, we then write D reference EAX, uh, sign extend it. So this would be zero, one, two, three would be dot. Yeah, okay, good. So dot is three. Uh, okay, that makes sense. So this angle bracket and the other angle bracket are 
here, so things are incrementing the pointers. This is case one, which is going to be plus plus one, which is going to be comma. So that's going to be getting a character. So get character. So interesting. So this is how we can feed input into the program. The reference P, move it into PBX, call get character, and then move the byte in AL to return a get character moved into PBX. Alright, and the case zero is if it's a plus. Reference the AX with an EBX, add one, and then move it back. All right. Okay. All right. So then, so this is what we got. So this is the um, this is our program. So, so okay. So P initially points to the tape. All right. We saw that. So we saw that in main. That set to the tape. Tape into P. Okay. So this is where P currently points to. So one thing we could do is we could move it back, keep moving it back with P, and then we could Okay, we always gotta remember what's our goal here. So we we want to read out the flag. So easiest if we can do some kind of NSH uh, funness. Uh, let's see, the question is, okay, so we, we know we can move the tape back onto P, which will actually let us then, yeah, we, we just keep going forward and backward. So we know, so we can only increment by one in either direction along this tape. So we only have 1024. We don't have any looping constructs, so we can't have that help us. But we can go backwards into P and then completely change the value there by overriding one of these bytes. The problem is we only have byte level access. And once we change that, we'll lose our P pointer. That may be OK. Yeah, OK. So what would we want? want to change. Okay, tape P. So it feels like a strong tape. Okay, so the other thing is Okay, I paused it for a bit so I could do a little bit of research. So, I what I was looking for was um, so essentially what I'm picturing this exploit being is what we're going to do is we're going to use our uh, we're going to use our uh, overwrite permission. So we're going to move our pointer p into by writing itself. We're going to try to move it onto the um, where we want to in the global offset table. Then we're going to read out four bytes for one of the values from uh, the global offset table so we can figure out uh, basically essentially leaking us a pointer into libc, which we already have. And then when we know that address, then what we'll do is we'll calculate the offset from there into uh, what's known as the uh, magic number. So um, basically the idea is uh, Every version of libc, or most versions of libc, when you think about it, they have a um, libc as a function called system, which essentially calls execve slash bin sh. And so 
like this. And so there's actually an instruction where if you are able to jump directly to that, it'll call execde slash bin sh with null and null. Um, so I'm gonna try out this one gadget tool, which I haven't used before because I am aware of this concept, but I haven't actually used it before in any CTF stuff. So this will be a good uh, interesting learning experience for me. And so now that it's installed, I should be able to say one gadget Bash user local bin one gadget permission denied. Okay, oh, uh, this is probably because of permission. Obviously, it's because of permission issues, but. So, on, uh, seven, five, five. into fix num. Sounds great. Sounds like a huge problem. Okay. I mean, the idea is this simplifies it because uh, Essentially, we need to jump to somewhere, but like we want to jump to system, but we want to make sure that we're calling uh, system with bin sh. And so uh, we can try to make that happen here. All right, I'm going to pause. Valid build ID. All right, I'm gonna pause for a bit and figure out what's going on. Found the problem. All right, it was a pubcat problem exists between keyboard and chair. Uh, so clearly, uh, what I realized is I was passing in bf not bf underscore libc dot so running it in here, we can see that have some constraints here that we can do this if uh, depending on what various values are. So here there's this one which depends on ESP plus 28 being null, ESP plus 22C being null, ESP plus 30 being null, ESP plus 33, 34 being null, EAX is equal to null, uh, which may be something we can uh, control, maybe the value of EAX depending on what happened. So, or where the stack pointer points to be null. But essentially, we do have all of these things. So, this is interesting. So, we have some targets that we can do, and these are offsets from the base pointer in libcbf underscore libc. And so, the next thing we need to figure out is what do we actually want to overflow? And so, the idea is we're going to look back on our uh, main function, see if is there anything else it does. So, stack check fail, we can't make that fail. Uh, it's assembly here. Yeah, so, we keep calling O. Let's rename that one. That's wrong. Um, okay. okay, so there's nothing after this, although string length gets called every time, but that gets called every single time, so that'll be hard to overwrite. So, I can scratch topper. Trying to force it to disassemble. Uh, yes, here we go. So let's see. Let's see if I can see. Super fun. Okay. So from BF. Okay, so a couple things. So, A, what we want to do, okay, so we're Try to do is figure out here's name the do bf function one like this. And so we'll look through each of these things to see which one. Oh, okay, perfect. Puts so 
it's what's used anywhere else. This no, so I'm looking to see if it's in there. Okay, great. So puts is only used and it's passed in this argument. Well, we can try some stuff and see what works. Play around with it. Alright, so we've got our target. We want to change puts to be essentially the link to our awesome address. Does give us some control so we can figure it out. I'm not sure. Let's try it. Some of these may be true. So, all right. Let's try that. Okay. So the idea is. What so we need to look at the GOT entry. Object dump dash or we we dump dash lowercase r for So this is the GOT entry for the car. Okay, so we know that that memory location will be the address at runtime of the character. And so now we can actually try building up our exploit bit by bit, which challenge is to get this key pointer to point to where we want it to. So let's first just It's really important that I use pump tools for this because pump tools will make sure that this um, that what we get back uh, that we can read in those bytes at a time to leak that we need to leak the um, address of put car and then what we're going to do is overwrite it. So we need to leak it first to calculate the fixed offset that we actually want to go to. variable. 
variable. We know our variable is going to be copying into, uh, we'll be copying onto the stack, some stack pointer. I'm just trying to think if it would be possible to leave. It's fine. All right, so we want to get our entry there. So we know at the start of the program, main is going to put take. All right, so P, which is at 0804 will have at the start the bytes of 0804 so to move the tape onto there, so what's the difference? So if I just wanted to try to move from the tape to this GOT entry, the idea is I would want to figure out how many characters do I need to do this crazy thing that I'm trying to do. So I have that, and I want to go from there to where the tape is. The tape is So I could just do this with 112. and strings actually become useful. I want to go up. So I want to add this value or I want to add a so, And I could look at the code actually and figure out if I want to do this, but let's see where I want this. So bang, 112 of those guys. So what that should do, and what I'm changing is put character. So but now I'm actually at there. So what I want to do is, so this will uh, move P to uh, GOT entry for flip pair. So now I need to read out each of those bytes. So I want P plus equal to I want to receive is four bytes. So I need to find out how on both of those. I think I can probably specify exactly how many characters I want. Like 
just to make sure I'm not actually receiving. Up to num bytes of data return. All the supply. So then basically what I need to do is now I've leaked out those four bytes from the GOT table of put character. Now what I've got to do is write those uh, back. But let's make sure that I'm doing this correctly. to make sure so I want to talk. So the last thing I was going to talk about. Well, the problem is my program terminated the connection before I was able to see all the rest of those bytes. Okay. Clearly I'm going to need to GDP this. So I've got to then debug this and figure out what's going on. So let's go over to my exploits, steal my B script. So I see what's wrong, first of all. I am going the wrong direction. So now we should see some actual results. All right, so I got some bytes. So Now that I'm moving actually in the correct direction, let's go 
come back to the UBF function, let's break the, the, the get car case. That's good. So now we is First, to create a Okay, good. I was leaking the wrong thing. Or I was leaking the first byte of it was wrong. So and then I need to make sure I read that thing that I missed. All right, cool. All right. So I should be good. First call, and then now I know the value there is F765 D920, so now I just want to make sure that I leak F765 D920. Great. Okay, so now I'm accurately wow, if I didn't uh, see if I didn't debug that, I wouldn't have known that I wouldn't have thought to have to call put character first to load that value. Um, so I would have getting the wrong value back. But now I know that I can steal that value from from there, and then now I know I can change it, so I can do a byte by byte character replacement uh, to replace that value with whatever I want uh, using the uh, using the comma character. I believe. Yeah, so comma. And I can write there, and then I can call it one more time, which will then should 
hopefully give me what I want. Let me execute. So now I can essentially, at this point, I can completely hijack the control flow of this application. So now at this point where it's going to call put character, uh, put car, I can force it to go wherever I want. So um, I can. So what I'm going to try to do is try to expand my repertoire. And, I don't want to have to deal with, I mean, I guess I could, yeah, I mean, I could put slash bin sh in a memory location and then um, figure out how to create some kind of rock chain to do that, but this kind of seems like a lot of work, so let's see if we can just use this magic. Jump to the magic value. Uh, the tricky part, though, is debugging this, so how can I? What I want to know is uh, how to run program using um, using a different, essentially a different version of C. So can I run this program? Right. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Preload one of the crates. All right, let's see if this works. are so close. Let's just see if this is one of those things I can just do.
a little bit dangerous. Uh, so what we'll do is let's try this on our version. So we have this version. And let's use it against our version of libc to make sure we can do this. So basically what I have now is scratch. Okay, so I know where that is at. I get that there. So I can leave that value. So our target, um, target magic.
Zero, and so now we need to make sure we send it. So we have calculated it here. So this is part of the chain that we passed in previously, and then we do, and then we want to actually trigger that at some point. Uh, at some point. Uh, trigger. Uh, trigger. Uh,
exit it with code zero one. <laughs> Next instruction, now G reference EAX, move that into EAX. C5, which is the thing that just overwrote. So we can actually make sure that EAX is in the hole here, which is good. Make sure it gets that if sign. Give the correct value in there, so make sure it can't make it. Okay, so then move. Okay, then jump to, yeah, that's exactly what we want. So it should be AX. It's not awful. Okay, so we did correctly overwrite it and we did correctly jump there, which is awesome. The problem is that ESI needs to be that value that we calculated of what the, uh, yeah, we're stacking. This is the value that we're at that we want to get over it. Okay, so we know after this is a bunch of zeros. So we know before we want to trigger our overwritten the character, we want to move the pointer to one, two, three, four. So this should output a null byte. Beggars can't be choosers, as they say. So then, there we go. Oh, wow. Uh, just got the dash. All right. 
I, okay, so this is obviously against our local copy, so that doesn't help us much. I just got to figure out how to change this around, put in the values that we want, bada bing, bada boom. We are good to go. Okay, so. So this is why the thing I love about local is you can easily change those values. Okay, now I need to change it to our offset. So go back to copper. Hard to zoom in. It's not bad. I learned a lot. It's super fun as always. And hopefully you saw some of the kind of tricks and techniques that Go. That doesn't work. All right. Thanks, everyone. And I'll see you.